My final chapter, A Legacy of Words, is a collection of short stories, essays, and thoughts, and it's also a reflection on my life and my love of literature. One of the stories in the book is called The Backyard. I'm going to read part four, George. Another night of writing, and the few hours I slept after that long, wondrous night, I felt very refreshed. I also had great dreams, and though I don't remember all of them, I remember that Lyle had a starring role. I don't know why this man intrigued me, and I felt so drawn to him. It had been a while since I'd been drawn to something, someone. In my travels here, my long car ride, I've met the occasional stranger, and we connected. Connected on a deep level, but it never lasted. I never wanted it to last. Those blue eyes that drew me in were just the beginning of my connection with the strangers. I've, of course, left them behind, and they helped enhance my story. But this one is all about Lyle. I had to figure out what he was doing and how it compared to what my imagination thought as I wrote about the neighbor and his backyard. Something was pulling me towards his yard, and I knew, somehow, he was pulled towards mine. I needed to make my yard impressive, something no one would dare to want to look beneath the soil, beautiful at its face value. Hmm, what could I do? As I sat on the sofa, I tried again what the news anchor was telling me about the forecast. I heard a rumble of his motorcycle. I immediately jumped to my feet. I didn't realize Lyle had a Harley, but when I looked out the window, it was more magnificent than I imagined. The black and red bike glistened as Lyle, dressed in leather pants and a leather vest that hardly covered his bare chest, straddled the seat. His blue eyes stared in my direction as he put the helmet on and dropped the eye shield. Yes, he must have known I was watching him. I think he must think that I wanted him, and I did, but not for sex, for something else. I needed him for the story. He pulled out of the driveway, being cautious and not reckless, as I would expect him to be, and rode down the street toward the main road. I could hear the roar of that magnificent twin cam engine of that piece of art. He was out of sight, and the roar dwindled the further he rode away. Now was my chance, and I don't know why, but I had to do it. I had to see his backyard. I slipped on my sneakers and hurried towards the back door. I went to my porch and looked around the yard for something, something that would allow me to peer over his fence. No, I couldn't go on his property, but I had to look. That nasty, decomposing scent would have disgusted anyone, but me, it drew in. As it contrasted the scent of the roses emitting from his garden, I had to see his rose garden. I couldn't see anything in the yard I could use, but then I remembered the garage. The previous owner must have left a few things here, and one was a ladder. I hurried to the garage and grabbed a large stepladder. I carried it and carefully to the far end of my yard and set it against the fence. I carefully climbed it, eventually peering over into his backyard. I was astonished by the seven rows, white, red, purple, pink, yellow, blue, and even a row of black roses, long rows taking up almost half the acre that made up his backyard. The bushes were close together, but it looked like there were some areas that just had holes that needed to be dug. I looked around and noticed that there was something strange close to the house, a pile, a pile of compost and round objects that looked similar to rotting pumpkins or something. No, wait, they look like heads, but they really couldn't be heads, right? I went to lean forward to get a better look, but one of the rungs of the ladder gave away and I fell to the ground. I don't know how long I was out, but I woke up to the roaring of that twin cam engine of his bike pulling in this driveway. I slowly sat up and noticed the ladder lying on the ground next to me. I could feel the warm blood drip down my face, so I wiped it away with my sleeve. I stared at the blood on my sleeve as I stood up, and when I got to my feet, I noticed him there, standing in my yard. See anything interesting, he asked. Actually, not what I thought it would be, I responded. What did you think? He stepped closer. Oh, you're bleeding. Yeah, no big deal. Damn ladder. I started walking towards the house and he grabbed my arm. What's this? I looked at his hand as he gripped my arm. 
You know what happens to nosy neighbors? You make them listen to polka, I grunted. You know? His eyes grew wide, and I could see those beautiful, clear blue eyes staring back at me. I know enough, I commented. You're perfect. I shrugged his hand off my arm. Perfect? Perfect for what? I'm not gay, you know, Lyle said. Never said you were, I smiled. I was curious, so I looked. No big deal. I knew there was something amazing about you. As I said, you're perfect. Again with being perfect, Lyle stepped closer. I could invite you over for polka and gardening, he sneered. Yes, I knew he was trying to scare me. I felt his connection with Lyle, but he was going to be a challenge. He liked what I liked, except he didn't tell his story. I did. As with anything, I not only write what I know, but what I want to know, and what I want to know, I do, I experience. Maybe he would. I wanted to experience it to the end, just what he had planned. I had to get the story out. I had to figure out how it would end. Maybe, I smiled. I have work to do. I headed into my house without looking back, but I could feel his eyes on me. I closed the door behind me, and I leaned back against the door. I never took my storytelling home with me. I just wrote about it later. The inspirations, the connections, but I think it was time. I learned from someone else's experiences. I headed to my office and sat down behind the typewriter. I just got more inspiration and I continued to write, even though the blood lightly dripped and then dried down my face. It gave me inspiration. As I finished typing the last line of the second to the last chapter, I stared at the words. The music played louder and louder, drowning out the shovel digging and the screams of the spirit as it descended into hell. I wasn't sure what else would happen. But there it was, at least one more chapter to finalize the story. I was surprised that I didn't need the night owls howled while I wrote. I stood up quickly when the door knocking startled my thoughts. Yes, it was Lyle. I remember his eyes staring at me, and then it went blank.